It's Sunday, April 26, 2021, and we're going to go deeper on gags like Koti, and you're going to understand it. Get ready. Let's go. Okay, guys, we screwed up last time. We went too shallow on the Koti dag, and people were still left asking themselves the question, what the hell is a dag? That's my fault. We went too shallow. We're going to go deeper this time, but you're totally going to understand it. We're going to go through bit by bit exactly how the dag works, but we're going we're to go through it at a good pace and you already know everything you need to know to understand exactly how that works. So don't worry. It's going to be easy. You're going to get it. We're going to fix it this time, but we're going to have to go quickly through our first three items to leave plenty of time so we can go through this Cody dag thing and everybody is going to understand it. But first, let's talk about item number one. There is a new Cardano Stake Pool Explorer called Pool Peak. It has a beautiful map of all the stake pools in the world. It also has a very cool epic calendar so you can tell when you're gonna get paid, like yesterday. So check that out, poolpeak.com. Item number two, we also saw a very cool tweet from at Saifedean on Twitter. I looked into Cardano and Marlowe Playground and I am impressed. The JavaScript library is so clean and will open the doors to many developers and code to code smart contracts much more easily. This is a great sign that are opening the doors to not just the pond, not just the Ethereum developers, but to the ocean in Charles's analogy of all the other developers in the world is off to a great start. Super excited to see this. Item number three, yesterday was the end of Epic 261 and that meant staking rewards day for all of us. It was get a day. I hope you killed it. I hope your staking pool killed it. I hope a dump truck had to pull into your vault and dump all of your aided ducats down into the vault and you were swimming around in it like Scrooge McDuck. Staking Rewards Day, always a great day. Okay, okay, so we dipped our toes into understanding how a directed acyclic graph like in Cody works last time, but we, we just went very, very shallow. We didn't go deep. And a bunch of people didn't understand, and I can tell people want to understand more about how DAGs work in Koti because it's becoming obvious that Koti might play a really big role in our ecosystem. So let's go deeper right now. And we're going to have to go through some some information pretty quickly, but you already understand everything you need to know to understand how a DAG works. So we're going to go through it real quick, but you're going to understand. Okay, first of all, let's contrast how a DAG works with how a blockchain works. Okay, so let's think about Bitcoin. In Bitcoin, you've got blocks. One block is formed, then the next block is formed, then the next block is formed. I know these are terrible square shapes, but I'm drawing with a mouse. Okay, and we've got miners out here. And for every miner, they are going to try to validate a block, right? And the way they validate blocks is they solve for a nonce, like in Bitcoin, the algorithm is SHA-256, secure hashing algorithm 256. And they solve for a nonce that's inserted into SHA-256 along with some data from the previous blocks. And they're trying to get a digest and output from that block that is lower than the target number, the target digest number. So they just run random numbers, one, two, three, four, five, sequentially or otherwise, until they find a nonce that combined with the data from the previous blocks, because there was a date, there was a block down here. So they take all the data from that one, they add it to the nonce, they combine it with the nonce, let's say, and they add it to SHA-256. And if they get a number that's lower than the target number over here, then they get to validate this block. And when they do that, they are grabbing a bunch of transactions and they're shoving transactions into this block right transaction here transaction here transaction here transaction here and we know with blockchains we this is how proof of work blockchains work we run into problems if blocks aren't big enough then you can only fit so many transactions in there and also only one miner can validate this block and shove the transactions in the next miner he can't really start work on this block until this one has already been validated because he has to include the data from this block, which includes data from this block, 
all the way back down to the Genesis block from 2009, it, when he combines that with his nonce, and he tries to find a nonce that is smaller than the target number for this block, right? And then he shoves his transactions in here. So you have double limiters on the scalability of this because only one block can be validated at a time and only so many transactions can be fit into each block. It's different with a directed acyclic graph. In a directed acyclic graph, remember we said, so let's say we have an x-axis here. There's an x-axis that represents time and it goes like this. Again, so sorry for my mouse drawing, but the way it works is you've got edges and vertices in a DAG. So these circles are the vertices and the edges go like this. The edges can only go in one direction. They can only go down this way, right? They can go like this, like this, like this. They cannot go back here like this. Why? Because this is cyclic and DAGs are acyclic. They're acyclic and it's become really important it's going to become really important to understand that they're acyclic because that's the only way they would work in a cryptocurrency. So in a DAG in a cryptocurrency, these vertices are going to be transactions, right? So we've got a bunch of transactions here and the edges are going to be connections between these transactions. Okay, the way it works in a DAG like Cody, when you add, and let's say there's there's others, all these are gonna have their own little, their own little chains here. Sometimes they'll go like that. Okay, so when you've got a DAG like Cody, when you go to add a new, when you go to add a new transaction, so let's say we want to add a new transaction out here. The way it works, there's there is no miner or stake pool who does this. Instead, you the you the party who wants to add this transaction to this directed acyclic graph that represents this cryptocurrency project you add this transaction here, or rather your node does, like your wallet, right? And then this transaction, it is going to reference these two previous transactions. In some DAGs, it only references one, but in DAGs like Cody, I believe it's two. I think uh, you probably know that IOTA and Nano are also directed acyclic graphs and not blockchains. And I believe in, uh, I believe in IOTA, it also references too. So this new transaction that your wallet is gonna add to the DAG, it's going to reference these two previous transactions and it's also going to validate them, right? It's gonna validate these transactions. So these transactions, each of them had to validate a previous transaction. So when this one was added, it validated these two. And when this one was added, it validated these two, we'll connect this one here too. This one validated these two, and this one validated these two. And now this one, it has to validate too. So these, so these transactions are now in this group, we'll say there's another transaction here, you know. And this one validated these two. Okay, so so these transactions here are all validated in the Cote nomenclature. These are all validated because they were validated by this one and this one, right? These transactions here, two generations back, these are confirmed. These ones down here are confirmed because they were validated by transactions which themselves have already been validated. These new transactions, as they're added, they validate old ones. So these ones, when they were new, like this one would have had to validate this one and this one. 
The interesting thing though, is much like a blockchain, there's always going to be a path all the way back to the beginning of the DAG, all the way back. It can't be cyclical, right? Like, like this one couldn't have been added and validated this one, right? If we had an arrow going back like this, if we had an arrow going back like this, it wouldn't work because then this one would be validating this one and this would be validating this one. If it were cyclical, it wouldn't work. There'd be no direct line back to the beginning of the DAG. So in a DAG, it has to be a directed acyclic graph. It can't be cyclic, but as long as it's a directed acyclic graph, it can operate like a blockchain in the sense that there's always a path all the way back, a path of validated transactions all the way back to let's call them the Genesis transactions, just like the Genesis block, right? So now that we understand how it works, what it looks like, why would we want to do this? So the answer is that while in a blockchain, we already said you can only do one block at a time and there's only so many transactions you can fit in a block. In a directed acyclic graph, a node could be adding a transaction out here that references these two, right? This one comes of these two. This one comes of these two. This one comes of these two. And this one, the node adding this one doesn't care what these other nodes are doing. And they can be doing them simultaneously. All these could be added simultaneously. And none of these nodes care how many other nodes are simultaneously adding transactions. So you can simultaneously, multiple nodes can simultaneously be adding transactions and validating old transactions. And this node doesn't care if there are five other nodes validating transactions right there now or 50 million, right? It doesn't care. It doesn't care. And there are also things like algorithms that cause the node to choose the heaviest chain. We don't want we don't want a bunch of nodes adding transactions down here and just validating this old transaction that's already been validated, right? We don't want that. So so these these DAG based cryptocurrencies are going to be they're going to have contain some kind of val algorithm that causes the node to choose to validate these. The next transaction is going to try to validate this one and this one and not this one, right? Because this one's already been validated. So they're going to try to add, try to go to the heaviest chain. And uh, that's how we keep adding. We keep adding to the tip, not to not to these old transactions. But anyways, I hope you understand a little bit more how DAGs work. I know this was some crazy, uh, some crazy drawing. You can see how this would be great for processing of microtransactions, right? This adds a huge dose of scalability when it comes to microtransactions. And no surprise, Koti, uh, it looks like Koti is gonna be on the Africa special this Thursday. And I think it doesn't take a lot of imagination to understand how microtransactions could be a huge thing in Cardano's deployments in Africa. So with that, I will see you tomorrow.